Good to see you here again today. And yes, it's warm, but uh, that's life for us Durbanites at this time of the year. Folks, I've entitled this morning's lesson, Priority Check. And if you came here this morning, expected to hear one of my normal lessons and feel encouraged when you left out, this is not one of those. Perhaps you might even leave here today saying, I wish I hadn't come. Because this morning I really want to give us a priority check. In fact, I think this is my mandate from God. Is that we come together and one of our things that we do is we encourage one another. But every now and then we need to evaluate where we are. Because it's not good enough sometimes just the status quo and sometimes the bad habits into which we have fallen. So, you know, this is not the normal raw, raw, re kick him in the knee type of a, a, a lesson. I really want to perhaps even make you uncomfortable this morning. Because your salvation is at stake. And my salvation is at stake. You know, when Jesus called us to follow him, it, it was a huge call. And the decision to follow Jesus, we take, we do not take lightly. And if we think it's just going to be this breezy walk following Jesus, blessings raining down on us, you know, this we could do whatever we want, we are sadly mistaken. I take you to Exodus chapter 20, and there's this incredible dichotomy taking place. Moses is on the mountain, he's in the presence of God, and he has been given the Ten Commandments. Those of you old, old enough for a, might, might remember uh, a movie on the te- called The Ten Commandments, and the main actor who took uh, Moses' place was Charlton Heston. A perfect choice, this man who had this big beard and this bushy hair, and he has a big, big presence. And I imagine that to be Moses. And he's there in the presence of God. Such was his presence uh, in God's presence that when he came down from the mountain, he was glowing. He was, I mean, he was so shining, the light was so pouring out of him, people couldn't even look on his face when he got down the bottom of the mountain. They had to put a sheet over his head so he could address the people, and boy, did he address the people. Because you see, although Moses was on the top of the mountain, in the presence of God, down at the bottom of the mountain, people were building a golden calf. They had forgotten the God who had taken them out of Egypt, the God who had brought them across the Red Sea, and, 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 and uh, as Moses was out of their presence for a few moments, and they are taking their jewelry, their grings, and their necklaces, and their bangles, they melted them up, and they made a golden calf you know so well and they started to worship this thing that they had made well Moses was mull if I can use that Afrikaans term in Exodus chapter 32 verse 8 Moses fuming I imagine like fire breathing who brought you out of Egypt was it this golden calf This thing you manufactured from your jewelry and now you bow down and you worship this thing? He said, how quickly you have turned. God has just delivered you across the Red Sea. This miracle of note. You're in the promised land. It's going to be this land of milk and honey. But the God who brought you here, you have dismissed And now you want to worship a thing you've made with your own hands. You have replaced the living God with a God of your own. And I'm going to ask you this morning, have you done the same? Have we developed gods in our lives? Have we developed idols and we've forgotten about the living God? And we've started to worship those things that are we have made. So it's very easy to point fingers, and I don't want you to think about anybody else this morning but yourself. I want to take you back to March chapter 20. I think this is when uh, this kind of... Do you remember COVID? Was it March 20? I think it was that, when our church stopped meeting. And 
all of a sudden we rush to start recording some type of a message and I remember those early days so clearly our jobs came to a standstill many of us lost jobs our schools came to a standstill our sport came to a standstill and in many ways we were decrying this horrific state of life but many many said you know what this is a good time for our families because all of a sudden we're able to sit around the table and we're able to get into God's word together this is a time that we can spend more time in the word we can spend more time praying you know this is a time of family this is the time of board games this is the time of interaction this is the time of of this family and and also this family and all of a sudden the hubbub of life was crashed to a standstill in that the thing that they could not take away from us and the thing that blossomed in those years what our was our relationship with God but you know what COVID is over and we're back to the red race of life and I'm asking you this morning has God's competition re-emerged in your life our sport our hobbies our bar 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 now we can get to the shops you remember those days and we we just we had to we had to spend two hours outside spa in a line just so we can get there and buy 300 toilet rolls you know remember those days two questions i want to ask you this morning question number one what are your golden calves what are your golden calves you know, if we could have this split screen like we do today, you know, you, you guys are with your, your, your tech savvy, you know, on, on your, your laptop, whatever, you can, you can put something up on the one side of the screen and you could put something up on the other side of the screen. Or you're watching a movie and you can, you know, sometimes you got, some of you got fancy uh, um, TVs, you know, you can split the screen and he can watch his sport with a, something in his ear, and she can watch the soapy, you know, we split, I want to imagine Exodus chapter 20, the split screen, God with Moses on the mountain, what a holy moment that is, and Aaron with the people building a calf, one of the most ungodly times in man's history, and I ask you this morning, what about you and your God? Is God the kind of a thing that happens like on a Sunday, split screen, we put him on a Sunday, but the rest of the week, we're with our golden calves. Man, we are pumping with our businesses and our bar, 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 you know, and our pleasures and all sorts of things. And I ask you this morning, what is your golden calf? What is the idol in your life? Just be honest. Be honest with you. God already knows. May as well just be honest with him. Is it pleasure? Is it always the next pleasure? It's the next thing. It's the next trip it's the next party it's the next sporting event or are we building bonds and building bigger bonds and bigger bonds but it's a bar 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 accumulate you know build build uh, the portfolio and if you're not sure this morning what your calf is what your idol is i tell you it's easy to find out where's your money going that's where your idol is perhaps this morning at it might be your career. You know, I just got to, well, Lord, we'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I will help out. I will volunteer, but I just got to build my career first. I've got to get through this education. But Lord, you know, my family is young. You know, there's no time. We wake up before the sun rises. And it just go, 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 go. Because we're, we, 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 uh, we're back on the treadmill of life. COVID is over. And we were chasing these things about our hobbies. You know, some of us, our hobbies are just consuming us. They take all our money and then when the church ever asks for anything, the, when there's any kingdom needs, in our, we, our wallets squeak when we open them. But when we go into our favorite store, funny, they just happen to flop open and the credit card just happens to land on the counter. This morning, I really wanted to ask you about your time. Is your time your sacred time? Or are you willing to allow God to have some of that time? Some of us were so busy, we can't even attend a Bible study. Can't even join up on a, on a, on a Wednesday night when we're loving God. We're so busy, 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 busy. Lord, please, don't mess with my wrath. I'll tell you right now, 
you've got an idol in your life if God doesn't get part of, of your, your time. If you're too busy to volunteer and help with the church activities, I'll tell you what, there's idols in your life. The second thing I want to ask you this morning, what have you willingly sacrificed because, of, because you are a Christ follower? I really think it's a time for us to evaluate at this early stage in the year and ask ourselves, you know, what have we sacrificed? Because without sacrifice, there is no reward. I really wish we had a smart app on our watches for our spiritual lives. You know, we've got them for our sport. Many of you have got these smart watches. Uh, not Clyde, by the way. Clyde donated his smart watch this, to the sea. He was in the harbor and something happened, and then we, I'm a glug, 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 and that, that way. So he, did, he didn't know that. But you know, we've, we've got these apps, and they count our steps. How are we going to active? You know, Diane's little, Diane's little watch, I can hardly see the thing. But if she sits too long, it tells her, get up, walk around. I wish we had apps for our spiritual lives like that. Apps that could, could really tell us about our spiritual spending. How much commitment we are giving to the Lord. It would tell us about when we are immoral, when we have a bad attitude. Uh, maybe an app that, that detects our language. You know, it's crazy. I love this Google thing. Um, I talk into my phone all the time. And I ask Google certain things. You know, it wouldn't be great if, if uh, you know, you use bad language and Google came out and said, do not speak like that. You're a child of God. Children of God, do not speak. You're an heir of the kingdom. Jesus hung on the cross for you. Do not speak like that. Pity we do not have smart. What have you given up because you're a Christ follower? Maybe a sport, maybe a hobby, maybe a pleasure. You know, some of us are just so addicted to the next jaw, the next thing, the next, that we just don't have time for spiritual matters. And we wonder why year after year we just kind of don't seem to be growing and we're still frustrated in our walk of faith. Do we only give attention to the Lord's kingdom when there is nothing else to do? I'm taking you to Mark chapter 10. No, no scriptures on the screen there. Just want you full attention. Don't worry about the screen. There's going to be no scriptures. So you're going to have to listen well. This is an incredible passage of scripture. Let's read it for us this morning. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he said. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, and then what Jesus, is, Jesus does, he trots out, he lists the commandments that God gave to Moses in Exodus chapter 20, up on the mountain. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, um, you shall not give false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother teacher. The man said, all these I've kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looked at this man and loved him. But one thing you lack, Jesus said, looked him in the eyes. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children... How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone who was rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to one another, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and he said, with man this is impossible, 
But with God, all things are possible. It's incredible. It, the scriptures say Jesus loved this man. But you know what? Love does not accept the status quo. Love does not allow a man to stand uh, and have his, his salvation jeopardized by his idols. Because you see, he had put God first. He'd kept all the rules and the regulations. He'd done all those things. But when it came to putting God first in his life, he hadn't done that. Only, this is the only time in the New Testament that, someone, that, that Jesus invited someone to follow, them, follow him. And they said no. His stuff had got in the way. His wealth had got in the way. I want to tell you this morning, following Jesus is not easy. You know, Peter called, uh, uh, J- uh, Jesus called Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew, a bunch of others, and, and they sacrificed. They gave it up to follow Jesus. You know, Peter, Andrew, they left their boats. They left their businesses to follow Jesus. James and John said they left their nets and they left their father standing on the beach and they followed Jesus. Matthew, lucrative tax collecting business. He left it up, got up from that table and he followed Jesus. Why? Why did they do that? I tell you why, because Jesus gave them a bigger vision, a bigger vision. Mark chapter 10 and verse 29 reads like this. Truly I tell you, Jesus said, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive 100 times as much in this present age. Homes and brothers and sisters and mothers and children fields along with persecution and in the age to come an eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Three promises as we close here. What Jesus is telling the people. If you're willing to follow Jesus, three promises. Number one, if you remember from this blessing, uh, from this passage I've just read from you, Mark chapter 10 and verse 29 and 30. You're going to get blessings. You're going to get blessings. And don't for one minute mistake that I'm preaching a prosperity gospel. If you want a prosperity gospel, there's many other places down on Belo Road, Sydney Road, you can go to here. You know, love Jesus and everything is going to pour out in heaven. This is not what he's what he is talking about the second thing jesus said i can promise you you're going to get if you give up everything to follow me persecution folks you know i don't haven't suffered much persecution in my life because i follow jesus and i'm thinking why is that and i'm maybe it's because i just haven't put myself out there enough you know as i, as I get these reports on a daily basis about the churches of Christ in Afghanistan and of China. Afghanistan, it's a, folks, a different ball game. When you announce Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can guarantee persecution. I read recently about fathers handing out guns to their daughters and their sons and saying, when they come to take you away, you know, the torture that has come. You need to decide. You're going to shoot them or you're going to shoot yourself. And you're going to let God be your God. Let me tell you about the churches in China. They are house churches because you cannot have a church like this. They are meeting in their homes. And I'm telling the leadership of the church there is telling their, their, uh, telling their members, the very first thing you do when they come into your home and that, you, that they arrest you, the very first thing you do there, You pray for forgiveness for thinking that faith comes without hardship. You will get blessings and you will get persecutions. I'm sure if Jesus had a PR person, Jesus said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've just told them they're going to get blessings and they're going to get persecuted. You need to change the narrative, change the dialogue. Maybe put it in the front print. Jesus puts it right there. You want to follow Jesus. You're going to be blessed beyond measure. 
but you will be persecuted. And then in the midst of this hardship, what would sustain these type of people is the third promise, the promise of eternal life. The invitation to follow Jesus is a communal one, but it is a decision for every single individual to make. Remember Jesus' words. Listen, church, listen very carefully this morning. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you will be, there will be a cross bearer. There are things that you're going to have to give up. There are idols that you're going to have to cough up, that you're going to have to throw into the fire, because this is not the lazy boy love. This is not lying on the sealy posture pity. It's not that type of blessings. If you're a follower of Jesus, he loves you, but he doesn't want you to stay where you are. There are morals you will have to change. You'll have to do it God's way or the, because there is no other way. I remind you this morning that, that there's only two destinations for us. It's heaven and hell. And, the, and Jesus clearly told us in the Bible that most people are going to hell. Broad is the way to destruction. It's very, very simple there. But I think that some of us even have been Christians for a very long time. You know, we just haven't, we just haven't picked up the cross yet because we, we want the blessings, but we don't want the, the, the persecutions. And Jesus is saying, you know, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. You know, you, when you come across, uh, you know, a, a follower of Jesus, you pick up that cross, you know. And then it's, it's not going to be a life on the blue train, you know, to a trip to a, a lovely picnic in the middle of nowhere. You know, this is, you're not getting on a, on, on a pamper cruise to go to some wonderful thing with Jesus and all his angels. No, this is, folks, this is a hard life. To follow Jesus means to make a commitment. And if maybe if you haven't even, you, you're considering maybe being a child of God this morning, I want you to consider the cost. Because the, really the devil wants to stop you from becoming Christian. And if you become a Christian, he wants you to be ineffective. He wants you to park the cross somewhere else. Go and find some storage and put the cross there and live a life like everybody else. The same language, the same morals. But if you're a follower of Jesus and you want eternal life, it's going to have to be different. What idols do you need to burn this morning so that once again you can put Almighty God first in your life? Is it a career? Is it a job? Maybe it's a boyfriend. Maybe it's a girlfriend that are, that are robbing you of the opportunity for, of the blessed life, the persecuted life and the eternal life. Perhaps it's the pleasure. You know, it's always, you know, the, the only thing you think about is the next jewel and the next trip and the next party and the next... It, Lord, forgive us. If we're just into the movie, ba, 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 you know, we call it retail therapy and then we laugh, laugh, laugh because the kingdom is getting our crumbs while we are building our palaces and, and our, you know, our wardrobes and our cell phones and our cars. And we got all those things and God's getting the scraps. We're building bonds and bonds and bonds and bigger bonds. And Lord, it's just we'll, one day, one day we'll go and fetch that cross. I really want to encourage you this morning. If you're not a Christian, it's the greatest life because there is the greatest reward. Blessings, persecution, eternal life. Those are the promises that Jesus gave in Mark. And if you're a child of God uh, this morning, and I really want to just give us one minute for you to just evaluate your life and say, what idols have I made? When eternal God up the mountain has got his best intentions for our lives, he gave Jesus a die on the cross. But you know what? We've put other things. Priorities, priorities. Let's have just a minute's silence. I would love for you to just be in tune with the Father. Allow the Holy Spirit just to convict you this morning. And then I will close us in prayer. And then we will sing together.
Almighty God, we come before you this morning individually acknowledging the idols that we have put in our lives. And Father, we have left you on the top of the mountain. I pray today, Father, that we will not be like a rich man who left the presence of Jesus because of the things of this world. Father, I pray for the commitment of our Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew, who are willing to sacrifice because of blessings. Father, to sacrifice and accept persecution, all because there is a crown waiting for us and eternal life. Father, Jesus laid down his life for us. We gladly accept the offer of forgiveness, but we understand, Father, grace is not a one-way street. Pray, Father, for repentance in every single one of us if we have not put you first. And may 2023 be a year of knowing Jesus and making Jesus known. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.